Hello, I hope all is well. This is Apostle Desmond, called to be an apostle by the Lord. I hope everybody's having a blessed week. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to my channel. I hope all is well. So before I get to my message, let us pray. In the name of Jesus, in the almighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for my people, for my family, for my squeezes. I thank you for whoever has come live, Father Lord, to watch this sermon, to listen to the word of God. Heavenly Father, may this word come with fire. May it break so many bondages, destroy evil yokes in the name of Jesus. Yakata, 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 Ekima, 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 Ekimo say, Shanda mo, Shanda mo, Shanda mo, Rakata, Rakata, Heavenly Father, I pray you bless this word, Heavenly Father, that I speak from you, Heavenly Father, that you minister the word, that you that you minister, that it shall flow, that it shall set so many free, Heavenly Father, I pray that this word, they shall not harden their heart to it, but they shall take heed in the name of Jesus. May this word bear much fruits, Rakata mo, Shanda mo, Shanda mo, Elima, 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 Eke Mose, Rakata, 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 Yakata, 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 Elima, 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 in the name of Jesus, I pray. So, the topic of my message today is toxic faith. Toxic faith. And what inspired me to, this is something I've noticed within the Christianity. Now, faith is good, but there's a point where your, 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 your faith is vanity. You're, 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 you're following false doctrines, you're following legalism, man-made rules and structures. So there's a point where faith becomes toxic. And like what, what brought me to this message today is the other day at my church, I'm not going to name the person, but they were talking about my church attendance. They were like, oh, you're not here. They have like three services within the week. She was like, oh, I've been missing one of the particular services. And that, oh, I need to take God seriously. I was thinking to myself, I have church I have school, I have work. It's unrealistic for you to think I'll be in service every minute. Where does, where, how does, okay, so where is it in the Bible that I have to attend your church every every day? Where my, my salvation is not tied to my church attendance. And this is why I came up with this message today, toxic faith. So my first point is we aren't saved by works, but by the grace of God and by faith. My second point is, Vanity, vanity, worship, legalism. My third point is balance. So this sermon today, Toxic Faith, is a very powerful sermon that will set so many free. So my first point, we aren't saved by works, but by faith in God's grace. It's important to remember that Jesus had died for us and for whoever believes shall be saved. See, it's first by, by, by the grace of God, by his sacrifice, not by our own works that we're saved. A lot of people don't understand that point. Works is good, it's important, but it's by grace of God, it's by our faith. So let's look at a few Bible verses. Let's look at John chapter 6, verse 28 to 29. Let's look at John. Let's look at John chapter 6, verse 28 to 29. John 6, John chapter 6, verses 28 to 29. So it says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he have sent. You see, it first starts off with belief. This is what people don't understand. It first starts off by belief. Now who goes to church the most? Now who church has become like a competition of who can fast the longest, who can come in the most fanciest outfit. It first comes starts by your faith. It first starts off by your faith. Let's look at Ephesians chapter two verses eight through nine. Ephesians chapter two verses eight through nine. Let me go to that verse. Ephesians two verse eight to nine. And we're looking at the King James Version. 
it says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. You see, we're saved by grace and, and faith. We need to first understand that we are walk with God. We're saved by grace and faith, not by our works. So all this, let me pray the longest. Or oh, if I don't attend church, I'm not saved. No, at God, you're supposed to fellowship. But God knows you have to eat. God knows you have to work. God knows you need family time. God knows you need to rest. If if you understand that it first saved by faith, it first starts off with faith, you would understand. Let's read Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You see, there's, there's modern day people who are bringing all these legalism, man-made structures. It's by your faith. That's why it says you worship God in truth and in spirit. It's not no competition. You're not trying to please men. You're just trying to obey and please the Lord. Let's read Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 to 14. Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 to 14. It says, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. You see, the law is not like faith. We have we first start off with faith. A lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of man-made laws, teachings, doctrines that have perverted modern Christianity and that's scaring people away from the church. I've seen it firsthand. Oh, you have to pay 20% in just offering. That's not even tight. There's some churches that do that. There's some churches selling miracle cloth, miracle anointing healing. It's so terrible. So we got this. So that's our first point. We got to remember that we're saved by the grace of God and by faith. Let's look at vanity. Let's look at chapter uh, point two: vanity, worship, and legalism. Now this is one, this is one of my favorite points that I'm getting into: vain worship and legalism. There's some churches that are enforcing long, long unnecessary prayers. I've been to churches where we attend midnight prayer. They, it's almost an hour, and then they want you to attend a live prayer also. You can pray at home. You worship God in truth and in spirit. You don't you not always need to be in some prayer session at midnight. God knows you need to sleep. God knows you have work in the morning. And this covers pastor worship, false concepts on offering, uh, false fasting practices. Fear tactics used by the church. This point, this second point is going to cover a lot of things. So let's look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 through 9. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 through 9. These people draw with nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see that even back in Jesus' time, Jesus was talking about this. They're worshiping him in vain. They're teaching commandments of men. I've been to churches where they, there's so much legalism. There's strict dress codes. There is so much legalism, man-made teachings and man-made commandments. If you're in that kind of church, leave there immediately. Leave it immediately. Let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 23. Colossians chapter 2, verse 23. Colossians chapter 2, verse 23. It says, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will, worship, and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. 
is seen. We're supposed to worship God in truth and in spirit. We're not worshiping him in flesh. We're not worshiping, we're not, if Christianity is more than just being in a building. Yes, church is important, but Christianity should be a way of life. You worship him in humility and wisdom. There's some people who feel like if they don't pray loud enough, God is not going to hear them. There's some people who feel like if they don't use vain repetition, God is not going to answer their prayer. There's some people who feel like if they if they don't give their life, if they don't give ninety percent of their income, God is not going to bless them. God is not going to bless me. That go, that goes into things like prosperity gospel, where people feel like if I keep giving more and more money, God will bless me more financially abundantly. God never promised that. He doesn't owe us any of that. He doesn't. There's prosperity in the gospel, but God is more focused on your soul, your salvation. Let's read Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 through 28. Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 to 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These out ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which train at a gnat, and a swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You see, vanity. They're paying tithes, they're trying to implement laws, but they, but they have turned a blind eye to the important things. Mercy, faith. That's what Jesus is saying. And that's, and that's, and that's some of the things that's going on to the church, in church this, these days. Loud music, but there's no preaching of the word. All these all this giving programs, all these giving programs, giving programs for the church to make money. But yet you don't see, but the church is not using that for what the church is supposed to. They're not giving to the needy. They're not, they're not giving to the members when they fall on hard time. Legalism, vanity, all these false doctrines. Toxic, this is toxic faith. Toxic faith. A lot of people will feel like if they miss, if they miss a church service, the devil is going to get them. And I've heard some churches even say this. Oh, don't come. If you miss, you're missing out on our church service, you're missing out on your blessings. I can still be blessed at home. That's a fear tactic. I can still be blessed at home. I can be blessed when I pray. I can be blessed when I evangelize. I can be pray. I can be blessed when I read the word. I don't need to be in your church service every minute to receive God's blessing. That is toxic faith, and that's a toxic saying used by some of these churches. And a lot of these churches are not going to preach this message. Because they know that some of the some of the things that they practice is not of God, but it's toxic. It's man made. It's man made. Let's read Matthew chapter twenty three verses one through four. Then spoke Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, "The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after the works, for they say and do not." For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. You see? You see what Jesus is saying? All these legalists, these Pharisees, they come, they create heavy burdens for people, but them themselves, they cannot even do it. It's the same thing with some of these churches. They expect their members to attend every minute, attend every minute. Your members, your members have work. They have family time. They need personal care. They need to rest. There are times where I come back from school work. I don't, I'm not feeling a church service. I, f I feel like I need to sleep. They create heavy burdens. They create, they create laws. They create strict dress codes. They, they create, they, they create a, an, an expected amount for you to be given. But yet themselves, they don't even give that amount. Hypocrites. They don't even give that amount. So let's let's not be hypocritical. Let's not worship God in vain. Let's not worship God in vain. I prophesy to you that this will break bondages.
It will give you discernment. Let's read John chapter 1 verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 9. John chapter 1 verse 9. No, that's not that's not the verse. Let's read Escalations chapter seven, verse sixteen to twenty. Escalations Escalations chapter seven, verse sixteen to twenty. Galatians chapter chapter seven. Ecclesiastes chapter. It says, "Number not thyself among the multitude of sinners, but remember the wrath will not tarry long. Humble thyself greatly, for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire." And warmth, change not a friend for any good by no means, neither a faithful brother for the gold of Ophir. For go not a wise and good woman, for her grace is above gold. Whereas thy servant worketh truly, entreat him not evil, nor the heroine that bestow himself wholly for thee. Be a true servant, be wise. A lot of people are worshiping God, but it's not in wisdom. They're following man-made doctrines, man-made rules and teachings. They're teaching, they're following the prosperity gospel. They're, pros they're following the word of faith movement. All types of false doctrines. Is that really worshiping God in truth and in spirit? If you if you really read the word, you will know that God didn't promise us a paradise here on earth. People remember the fruits of the spirit, joy, peace, gentleness, but they've forgotten one. They've forgotten one particular, the most common one long suffering long suffering there are a lot of people who get sucked in into this miracle water into this oh if you sow the seed you'll definitely receive healing vain worship false teachings legalism healing open only happens if it's the lord's will i don't care i don't care if you pray for nine hours if it's god's if it's not god's will for healing healing will not happen Let's go into Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see, the only person your worship should be going to is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My, another point in this message is, in toxic faith is, there are some people who put the pastor on the same level as God. I'm also called to serve pastors, your apostle, your prophet, they're all just servants of God. You see? Yes, you can, yes, you can honor them. You can give them that honor. But at the end of the day, it's, there's a difference between honor and worshiping. There are a lot, there are a lot of people who, they feel, they feel like they must give their pastor their last penny. There are a lot of people feel, who feel like, oh, I cannot pray for myself, my pastor must do it. The pastor, the prophet, he's supposed to bring, he's supposed to lead you to God, guide you. He's not supposed to be your God. There are a lot of people who have put their pastor on the same level as God. There are some people who have put their pastors even higher than their family members. You know, even higher than their biological parents. My father in the Lord. Jesus said, call nobody father. They're not your spiritual father. Your only spiritual father is Jesus. Pastor worship. Vain worship. Legalism. There's, there's something, I understand honoring the man of God, but it comes to a point where it's worship. Is worshiping and idolizing him, which is not of God. It's not of God. Let's read Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. 
Galatians chapter 2 verse 4. And that because of false brethren on the words brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they may bring us into bondage. You see, Paul was talking about men who have came, they've caused division, and they've come to pervert the gospel. And that that and that and that is so true. Even in modern times, there are a lot of preachers perverting the gospel, bringing all types of toxic, false doctrine, all types of legalism. All types of things to bring us back into laws. To bring us back into laws. And these people are called global religious terrorists. A global religious terrorist is somebody who, who terrorizes the truth of God by bringing division and perverting the gospel. And when they pervert the gospel, all the, the, all the false doctrines that they introduce is spread like cancer. And it can go on a global scale. When I first came to America, the prosperity, I never knew what the prosperity gospel is. Prosperity gospel just be, started becoming more and more popular. And now it's like cancer. It's spreading in Africa. It's spreading all over. People think that, oh, if I give this much to the church, God is going to bless me abundantly financially. That is that is heresy. That's false. That's a false doctrine. So these people, and most of these people, they know what they're doing. They know the truth. But because of their greed, they're perverting the gospel. They introduce no types of legalism, all kinds of things that is not of God. That's not even faith. That's why I call it toxic faith. So let's go on to the third point. The third point is the third point is balance. Balance. It's good to have works, but anything in excess is not good. Anything you're not truly doing out of faith is sin. It's not truly faith. You need to create personal time for yourself. You need to create time to work because the bills got to pay. The Bible, there's, there's a Bible verse that's pretty much saying no food for a lazy man. You need to create family time. Do you know how many pastors are leaving the ministry because of burnout? They don't, they don't have that balance. There's no personal time. There's no work time. Everything is church. And, and there's nothing wrong with devoting your life to the work of God. But God understands, even Jesus rested. God, God knows you're not a robot. You have to take time to rest. You have to pay your bills. If you have a family, don't neglect your family. So balance, the third point, balance. Let's look at Escalations chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 8. Verses 1 through 8. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be safe. For the Lord hath given the father honor over the children, and hath confirmed the authority of the mother over the sons. Whoso honoreth his father maketh an atonement for his sins, and he that honoreth his mother is as one that live of treasure. Whoso honoreth his father shall have joy of his own children, and when he maketh his prayer, he shall be heard. He that honoreth his father shall have a long life, and he that is obedient to the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. He that feareth, it is Ecclesiastes. No, this is this is not the right. This is not the right. He that honor his father shall have long life, and he that is obedient to the Lord shall be a comfort to his mother. He that feareth the Lord will honor his father and will do service unto his parents as to his masters. Honor thy father and mother both in word and in deed, that a blessing may come upon thee from them. You see, have family time. Yes, you can worship and serve. Yes, you can have faith in the Lord, but also remember, remember your family. Family is God's will. You being in unity. And creating time with your family is God's will. It's God's will. Let's read Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, Jesus' yoke is easy and light. If you constantly feel overwhelmed with church ministry, with your work with God, then you're not truly ex you're not truly walking by faith. You're, 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 if you because if you're truly following Jesus, you should understand that His yoke is easy and His burden is light. Jesus is not going to burden you with long, long prayers. He's not going to burn, burn, burden you with unnecessary fasting periods. In Escalations, they say there's a season for everything. Season to mourn, season to bury, season to be born for marriage. There's a time for everything. There's a time to rest. There's a time to do the work of God. There's a time to practice your faith. But if you constantly feel tired, overwhelmed with ministry stuff, with church stuff, with your work with Christianity, then then most likely you're not you're not you're, you're not walking by faith. You're either walking just by works, or you're either walking in vanity, or you're after walking to just serve to just serve your pastor, or to maintain an image. Because when you're walking with Christ, you will not feel heavy burden. You will not, you will not feel heavy burden. Let's read Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter four verse nine through eleven. Hebrews chapter four. Verse 9 to 11. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 9 to 11. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God, for he that is entered into his rest, he also hath seized from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You see, there's rest in God. Even Jesus, even God rested when he made the earth, the heavens, he rested. So, so at any name, it will truly for the example, we also should know that there should be rest in the Lord. There's a time to go to church. There's a time to pray. There's also a time to eat. There's also a time to fast. So there has to be balance. A lot of people are missing balance in this life. And that's, and that's what's scaring a lot of young people away from Christianity. So all this legalism, all these false doctrines, all this vain worship, all this come to church every day, all this no time for yourself, that is not of God. God understands you have to work, pay bills. God knows you need family time, you need sleep. Toxic faith is a serious thing killing Christianity. Let's read Psalms chapter 107 verse 2. Two. It says, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of souls, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. You see, God give us rest. 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 People, people think that, oh, I have to pray all day. I have to read the Bible all day in order to remain right with God, in order to grow spiritually. It set a little time for prayer for Bible reading. But don't but don't but don't but don't but don't follow so many don't follow man doctrines and which puts such a heavy burden and load on you. Do not God understands you're human. A lot of a lot of people they want to be very spiritual, but they also neglect they 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 also neglect like their like their fleshly needs. Your body needs to eat. I remember one time reading and reading an article. Somebody wanted to to imitate Jesus and like fast for forty days and forty nights, and I heard that they started having all sorts of illness. I think they might have even died. That is toxic faith. That is toxic faith. Me, I try to fast once in a while. If it's something, it depends on what I'm fasting for. Maybe it's strength. Maybe maybe it's to maybe it's to break a habit. Maybe it's for more discipline. But I'm not, but I'm not just gonna every minute just fast forty day for every face for no for no reason, just 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 to appear holy or to make myself feel super holy. See, a lot of people are following God in vanity. They're practicing toxic faith. They're not practicing true faith. Let's read John chapter four, verse twenty three to twenty four. John chapter four. John chapter 4, verses 23 to 24. 
it says, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, we worship him in spirit and in truth. We don't worship him to be seen. We don't worship him to appear holy. We don't worship him to please church people, to please our church leaders. We worship God in spirit and in truth. We practice true faith. We don't follow man-made doctrines. We don't follow the prosperity gospel. We don't practice the word of faith movement. All these all these heresies and things that are just perversion. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We don't worship him to be seen. We don't worship him to be idolized. We don't worship him to gain recognition. We worship him in spirit and in truth. So thank you very much for tuning into my channel. I hope everybody has a blessed one. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a blessed one.